Welcome to Lemon Curd, a charming town full of charming people, leading charming lives and eating charming food. I wondered if you could talk me through the initial process of like figuring out what this would look like as a series, you know, at what in what ways did you have to expand upon or contract maybe what Three Busy Debras was as a live show? The live show that we initially did was a uh, was just the three of us playing the Debras. It was very sparse and it was in a black box theater and it was very limiting in terms of like what we could do and what we could see, both in terms of just like where we were and like how much money we had to execute things, which was like not any. So we didn't really, <laughs> mostly just described scenarios happening <laughs> rather than actually seeing them. So a big part of it was just actually like having a budget where we could see the things that we were had been referencing for five years. <laughs> so <laughs> that was part of it but then also like con the, our initial conception of the show was just the three of us for the most part so figuring out what the town looked like and what our houses looked like and what the other people in the town acted like did they talk exactly like this how did they feel about us all that kind of stuff so that was like some of the questions we were asking ourselves when we first started when we did the play and our videos originally the conception of it was that all of the Debras were the same um, we wore the same outfits, we talked the same, we each had like different activities that we did and different points of view, but for all intents and purposes, they were the same character. And when we were developing the show, we were trying to figure out how to make each Deborah different while still being a Deborah, and also what does that mean? <laughs> like, which <laughs> ground them in being a Deborah, and which things can be different. There were like logistical translations too, where in the original play, we all had a different eye line. So when we would speak to each other, we wouldn't look at each other. And we kind of learned through translating it to TV. And it really took like shooting our original, our pilot uh, that we shot in 2018, um, realizing like that doesn't translate very well to um, on camera. Mm -hmm. And it made it look like there was like, a production mistake <laughs> almost and and we we learned that the Debras in order for it to work on TV they had to like look at each other when they spoke and that changed how we performed it and it taught us a lot about the characters relationships in a way well, where they're a little more presentational live yeah and like how do we make them feel detached and disconnected mm -hmm. without it looking like we don't or no one knows how to shoot a TV show <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to touch on Anna DeCosa. What was the relationship like working with her? She really had her shit together and we really trusted her and it was really exciting to get to have her sort of mm -hmm. involved from the get-go with that. When we were like right in the writer's room and writing the show, she never was like, that's impossible. Every like gag, every, you know, big like stunt that happened in the show was like executed seamlessly. She had such a good grasp on like what was important to us, even if it was so it like sounds really silly. It's like there were certain gags that like needed to be in the water or like needed to be <laughs> at a museum. And like she was just like, Okay, we're doing that, let's do it. And that sort of can do attitude makes the impossible feel possible. And it was really exciting. Meet Deborah. Careful, kid. Don't fall in love with me. Debra. This is my sleeping helmet. It stops the dreams from getting out. And Debra. I'm gonna look inward and make some big changes to my personality. I'm getting fake tits. How much of a set of rules did you guys have for yourselves and when you set out to write this? It's sort of case by case as mm -hmm. they come in a way. Um, we don't we don't restrict ourselves to like what's too crazy or what's too much, but is it true to like the character's core? We've been working in this world and it's so clear to us sort of like what they would do in a given situation, or at least like there's enough pre-existing foundation that when something comes up, we usually come to the same conclusion about what the Deborah's response would be. It's kind of like cartoon logic and the, like what Alyssa said of like case by case basis, it's like sometimes something will appear just for a shot and sometimes it'll appear and then it'll be there for the rest of the scene. And it really is just, what's the funniest? <laughs> it's a lot of conversations. It's like, it's not a continuity or it's here and then it's gone. Like <laughs> it, 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 we found in production that we, that that was a, a lot of issues because 
like live action gags is something that I think we do a lot of and it cartoon rules in real world is like a interesting production mm -hmm. thing with each episode it like it's going to such zany places we want it to have at least something that you can latch on to and like not feel lost in the cartoonishness of it because uh, like thing we want things to feel like they're coming from a place that makes emotional sense mm -hmm. so that we can be as silly and stupid as we want to be speaking of silly i had to ask about male lizard he's a real diva on set oh my god <laughs> and and oh god. he's canceled <laughs> Ooh, awkward <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, he actually, we were writing him out of season two. Um, <laughs> he licked me. Oh no. He licked me. Oh dear. The male lizard was like a, a character in the show and then he was just sort of became like our dream of like someday we'll be able to have a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing our show at the Annoyance, like the first time we did our show, it was our last show after the show had been running for three months. And Mitra and I got a lizard. The lizard escaped. <laughs> and I caught the lizard. Alyssa somehow, yeah, saw it. I don't. I still don't know how you caught it because we were all freaking out that the lizard escaped. <laughs> and you just like saw it and picked it up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we were, well, I know it. In, deep in my bones, I knew the male lizard was here. <laughs> hey, Deborah. It's Deborah. 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 Deborah.